Hello, my name is Rachel and today I'm doing a book review. I just said in my last video that I wanted to make some more book reviews, so I decided just to jump on in and make one. So I'm going to be reviewing Refugee by Alan Gratz today. So what you need to know about this book. First off, it's by Alan Gratz and he's amazing. You should go read him. Um, second, this book is from Scholastic and let's see how many pages it's got. Um, it's got a lot of information in the back, so total pages 338, which is not bad at all. Um, if you cut out the extra material, which you shouldn't because it's so good, uh, it should be 317 pages of like story, but um, there's like maps and details in the back that I think you'll like to read once you get through it. So. What else you need to know? This is basically the culmination of three different stories of three refugees. So first of all, we have Joseph in the 1930s. He is a Jewish boy who is trying to escape Nazi Germany with his family. And he is fleeing on, um, I believe it is the St. Louis ship. I may have that wrong. But he's fleeing on uh, a ship towards Cuba uh, because Cuba has said that they will take in these refugees. But once they get to Cuba, Cuba is no longer sure they're willing to take in uh, Jews. And now these are all historically accurate. Uh, Joseph is a made up character, but the details in the book are all real. There was a ship that was uh, turned away from Cuba during World War II and sent back to Europe. Uh, we also have Isabel. She is a girl in Cuba in the 1990s, I think 1994, and she is fleeing uh, Fidel Castro. They have horrible conditions there. They're basically starving. Her mother is pregnant and her father is about to be arrested. So they have decided to flee the moment Fidel Castro says that they are now allowed to leave. So they are in a boat, uh, a rickety boat that they built and fleeing towards the United States for asylum. And then our third character is Mahmoud and he is a Syrian boy in 2015 uh, in Aleppo and his home is demolished by a bomb. His brother is basically catatonic at this point. I mean, he's moving uh, he's, he's there, but he's not like there, if that makes sense. He's, all he's known is the horrible conditions of Aleppo, this war-torn town, and it, nothing really shocks him at this point. And they are journeying, um, across the Mediterranean by boat, and that's why there's a boat on the cover, because all three tie in with a boat, um, they're going across the Mediterranean and then up into Germany. So we have one boy who is going from Germany to Cuba, one from Cuba to America, and one from Aleppo up to Germany. And individually, they're all really great stories. And I have to say at the beginning, I almost felt like I could have read them separately. But once I got into it and got more of a feel of the characters, it was a lot easier to go from one to the other. And it was really... Um, harrowing to see how their stories connect and how this same situation just keeps happening and uh t to know that something is, like this is happening right now is tragic and it really makes this such an important book and I will say in more than one way like with the boat these stories all tie together they have such similarities but yet st such differences uh that it was really 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 interesting to see how they all matched up and obviously because this is a novel like I said Alan Gratz took real life stories and kind of played around with them for dramatic sake so there's a lot more tie-in than there probably would be in a real life story but that's the novelization the actual good stuff at the back that I was telling you about there is a map for each character's journey of course now that I said that I'm not gonna be able to find it and there's actual information about where he based. So here's the journey from Aleppo up to Germany. Um, he describes in his author notes where he's come up with all the characters for this book and gives you a lot of historical background. So overall, I thought this was a really, really good book. I don't tend to like really sad stories and I felt like this had such a huge potential to be sad. And in some ways it was so sad because these people have horrible lives trying to flee their hometown. They have no place. They have no place. And that is so, so sad. Um, 
but there's hope and I think that is really the overwhelming idea of this book that no matter how bad things get there's hope you just have to keep moving forward you have to lean on your family and friends and you just have to keep moving forward with that hope that tomorrow is going to be better and for some of these refugees it was uh, some of them have happier endings than others uh, they're all very heartwarming and touching which again I'm not one for that because I don't like to cry I made it through this book without crying though so that's that's something but um there are deaths in this book there are serious consequences to the events happening in their lives um uh, jo Joseph's father uh, was in a concentration camp and they're dealing with the ramifications of his mental state now that he's out. Uh, he was kicked out of the concentration camp and told he had basically a day to get out. And it really shows in how he interacts with people afterwards. And this is a, based on a real character, a real person who got out of a concentration camp and was told to flee. And I think the fact that this is all rooted in realistic characters makes it that much harder to read. I mean, if Alan Gratz had just made up all these stories uh, about something that had happened, it wouldn't be so touching. The fact that these were based on real people and that this is such a realistic Thing. I mean, these people, these actual characters could have existed. It's just so touching. Um, and I think the fact that it's represented as a story for and from the perspective of children, it makes it even worse. <sighs> I think Isabel might be a little bit younger, but maybe not. I think they're all within like the 10 to 15 range. I don't know if it explicitly says how old some of them are. I know Joseph does celebrate his bar mitzvah on the boat. Um, but I'm not sure if any of the other two characters have a direct reference to their age. But, I mean, they're like middle grade, early teens. And it's just so tragic. And having been a teacher and still working with students, I just think, um, while none of my students have exactly gone through this, I have students who have had something similar. And they go home to things that are not what everybody thinks they go home to, if that makes sense. Some kids might be homeless. Some kids might have awful home life. So I think books like this, while it may not represent what current students in America are going through necessarily, it does shine a light on the fact that you don't know what people are going through. You don't know their journey. You don't know their story. So I think books like this are super important, especially in middle school, especially in schools, period, to highlight that we need to have good people, we need to have supportive people, and we need to have hope. So I highly recommend this book to you. And if you have a middle grader, definitely get this book to them. It was really, really good. I think this should be a book club book for anybody who needs a book club book pick. It's so good. And with the three stories coming together, I think it gives you a lot of details to discuss. So I highly recommend it. Go give it a read and let me know what you think. So there you have it. Alan Gratz, Refugee. Go read it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.